why am I going to move the chicken here and move it back? Yeah. <laughs> I know I probably said to do that in my recipe, but I'm <laughs> so my column is coming up on its 15 year anniversary, and I'm like, I should let's do on the 15 year anniversary. I'm like, let's do 15 things that I've done that I would like to correct for the record. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark from NYT Cooking, and I'm going to show you my go-to way to roast a chicken. The thing about roasting a chicken is how do you adjust timing so you have perfectly cooked white meat that's juicy and tender, and then dark meat that's cooked through. I like to splay my chicken. The principle is dark meat starts cooking before the white meat so that it all comes out even at the end. And then once I have my chicken in my pan, I love to add things to the chicken fat right at the end. It's fantastic for greens like Swiss chard or spinach or kale or whatever you have. And today I'm gonna do it with Swiss chard and some scallions. Whenever I roast a chicken, I always like to dry brine it in advance, which is a fancy way of saying I just like to put salt and pepper on it and then stick it in the fridge. And what happens is the salt and pepper really can get into the chicken flesh and get it well seasoned. Start out with your chicken. And if you work on a little sheet pan, then you don't have to worry about messing up your cutting board later. I always save this and I render it, and then I eat the crispy skin, and I save the chicken fat, and I use it for cooking. Or you can just throw it out. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over my chicken, including inside the cavity. And that's really important because you're gonna eat that, you're gonna eat the whole chicken, so you wanna flavor the whole entire chicken. So don't forget to get in there. And this is how I think about salting almost anything, is I just pick the salt up in my hand and I'm, I pretend that I'm gonna eat this because actually I'm gonna eat this. But think about salting your plate, right? Think about like you have stuff on your plate and there's no salt on it. And then you just kinda, you know when it feels right. And it's the same thing when you're seasoning anything. It's like a raw piece of steak, raw chicken. You, you sprinkle it on until it's lightly coated and you're good. I actually have a swap, so I'm gonna put this guy in and I'm gonna take the other one out. And it will be brined. It's been sitting there for two hours. So as you can see, the salt is dissolved in the chicken, you know, in the, the chicken juices, which is what you're looking for. And now I'm gonna splay the chicken. So what does splaying the chicken mean? The object here, just like spatchcocking, is to break the chicken down a little bit, to let more hot air reach more parts of it so that it cooks more evenly. See, a chicken, it's got this cavity here, and this cavity is slows down the cooking because there is colder air in here. If you break the chicken down a little bit, it'll cook more quickly and it'll cook more evenly because you can have the hot air surround the chicken in more places. I'm gonna cut the skin, just cut the skin right between the breast and the thigh. You're not cutting through any chicken flesh, you're just cutting through the skin. Now, I'm gonna take the legs, and I'm just gonna pull them out a little bit until they flatten. You're gonna kind of hear them click. And that's it, you see how they lie flat now? The hot air from your oven can get right in here and cook the chicken thighs faster. And also, I'm going to cook this chicken in a preheated cast iron skillet. And because the legs can lie flat and make contact with that skillet, they cook quickly and then the skin gets nice and brown and it's really, really good. So I have put a cast iron skillet in the oven. It's been preheating for about half an hour. I've got a 500 degree oven. I'm gonna carefully pull it out. I'm gonna put the chicken in there. But first I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> okay, see how this is smoking? That means it's hot. So I do this at 500 degrees. I did this, I created this recipe several years ago and a lot of people have since told me that their oven smokes up terribly and in fact their smoke alarm goes off, their whole house smokes up, that's a real mess. I mean, not quite, but that they have a lot of smoking issues from a 500 degree oven and splattering chicken fat just between you and me. So now, sometimes I do this recipe at 450 instead of 500. It doesn't get quite as brown, but it's still delicious and there's a little bit less smoke. So you can do it either at 450 or 500. I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. You know, when I do recipes, I create them, I put them out there, and then when I cook them, sometimes I make little changes and that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to just, you gotta be careful here. Do not burn yourself. So see how that handle is? Just gonna turn it away from you. Take chicken. I'm holding it inside the cavity so that way my hand is protected. And I am just, hear that? That's so gratifying. And now I'm pressing, I wanna press the legs down just for a few seconds just to kind of give them a head start. And again, they're cold, my hands are protected. And then I'm gonna pour just a little bit of olive oil right over the chicken to help it brown. 
just a little bit. It doesn't need much because it already has some chicken fat. But the brist always needs a little bit of fat. And now this is gonna go back into the oven for 30 minutes. Here's another thing about your smoking oven. The cleaner your oven is, the less it's gonna smoke. Just saying. While the chicken is in the oven, I'm gonna prep the vegetables. And like I said, you can use really any vegetables that will cook in about 10 minutes. If you didn't wanna use a recipe and you just wanted to wing it, garlic, scallions, shallots, ramps, onions, and lemon, like those with your chicken, that's like the little trinity, that's what you want. Honestly, the sauteing of the greens in the chicken fat is like this instant side dish. It's so easy. It doesn't dirty another pan, which I love. And then you get some vegetables, so it works out. The dark green parts of the scallions, I'm gonna throw in with the leafy greens because they're gonna cook really quickly. So I'm just gonna slice those up just into rounds. And I'm gonna add them with the charred leaves. So these are the charred stems and these take longer to cook. So I'm going to slice them up and I'm gonna add them with my scallion whites. What other vegetables have I done? I have done asparagus. Asparagus is really, really good in chicken fat. If you haven't had it, I highly recommend it. Just anything, like I said, anything that's gonna cook in about 10 minutes. Oh, you know what I've done also? Um, I have boiled potatoes, and so they're cooked through, they're boiled, and then you, you know how you just smash your boiled potato a little bit, and you throw those in the chicken fat. And they don't get crispy, they don't have a lot of time to get crispy, but they just get chicken fat infused, which is totally delicious. Okay, so these are ready, and now these are the things that are gonna need more cooking time. My charred stems, scallions, my garlic, and also my capers. I'm just mixing them with the fat a little bit so that they get coated. 10 more minutes for the vegetables to start cooking and the chicken to finish cooking. 10 to 15, depending on how big your chicken is. Okay, so I'm gonna take the chicken out of the pan and let it rest on this cutting board while we finish it up. Look how beautiful that is. Look how crisp that skin is. That's the thing about using the really high oven. The skin gets crisp. So this pan is super hot right now. It is holding the heat of the roasting. I'm gonna add all my leafy greens and I'm just going to uh, wilt them down in the skillet. If they don't start to wilt right away, you can just turn the burner on. This might need a little extra something and it's gonna absorb all of the delicious chicken juices. It's so good. And you wanna let your chicken rest for at least five to 10 minutes anyway, so. The chicken has already given up a lot of the salt into the pan. So normally when I saute things, I would just be like throwing in salt at this point, but I'm not going to. I have learned the hard way. <laughs> saute it, taste it, and then add your salt for this particular dish. If you love anchovies, you throw some into this with the anchovies, it's so good. Look how pretty that is. That's the thing about using the red chard, is it's just so beautiful. And it's done. All we have to do is carve it. I suck at carving. <laughs> um, got my chicken on my platter. I'm just gonna add the greens and some of the jus at the bottom of the pan. I'm just gonna put a little lemon over everything and extra lemon in case anybody wants more. And that is it, my splayed chicken with the Swiss chard and the scallions and the garlic and capers. It's always a test, is the breast meat good? Mm. It is tender, it is well flavored. Mm. The greens are so savory. This is one fine roast chicken. This is, this is why this is my go-to roast chicken, because it is so easy and it is so good. I have nothing else to say. Make this, go make it, it's delicious. <laughs>